So you plant the tomatoes and they're doing great. But what the heck do you do with them? How do you trellis them? How do you trim them? You've heard pinching the suckers or putting them in a tomato cage. There's all different ways to do it. So what I have here is tomatoes that I started from seed a few months ago. Now that the weather is heating up, they um, are starting to take off. And I've been very busy, so they've been neglected. So what I'm going to do today is show you how I trim them, clean them up, and try to save some of the tomatoes. There's some on the vine here already. So I'll do my best to preserve those so they can keep growing and show you how I trellis them up. Thanks for joining. This is Tiff, the informal farmer, and today we're talking tomatoes. As you can see, I have quite a mess of my tomatoes, right? I would even dare to call it a patch because it might look like it's one or two real healthy tomatoes, but I've got at least 20 different tomato plants in there. So I might be thinning some out. If possible, I might try to transplant some of them. Um, so it'll be interesting to sort through this mess and see what we can do. I wanted to start out by introducing you to the tool I use for trellising. You may or may not have seen these before. They could be called tomato hooks or tama hooks. Um, there might be some other names for them, but that's what I know them as. I will drop a link um, down below in the description of the video uh, for Amazon. So the way these work, you take the loose piece of the twine Okay, so that loose end is going to end up going in the dirt near the base of the tomato plant. And then this piece is going to wrap around a pole or some type of a trellising system that you might have. And then you kind of like wrap it around itself to tighten it. And then you can... What I choose to do is wrap my tomato plants around this vine and kind of have them be around the twine and have them be self-supporting. Um, they do make little clips so you can clip your plant up along the twine. I don't have time to maintain or keep track of all of those clips and I don't want to just throw them away or have them end up in my compost pile. So I just, I've found that wrapping the tomato plant around the twine works just fine for me and my situation. And um, if you've seen my other videos about my garden and how it's set up, you will, you'll remember that my garden is actually inside of an old batting cage. I'm gonna wrap that around um, at the top up there. So my tomatoes are here. They're gonna get trellised up to that pole along the backside of them there. And then the post or the pole going across up there. So I strategically planted them where they would have access to multiple poles um, because I knew I was going to plant them kind of thick. I didn't think they'd all come up. Um, but So I will show you how I get all that set up. I think what I actually should be doing first is sorting through here, finding out which ones are small enough that I can pick up and um, stick them up gently and transplant. I do have space elsewhere in my garden where I can put them and which ones are going to stay and try to trim them up a little bit uh, so that I have like a main leader vine that I can use on my twine for trellising. So let's see if I can catch all that on the film. Okay, so I'm going to be getting in here and trying to see which ones of these I can transplant. So here is a very comparatively smaller stemmed tomato plant here as well, compared to something like this is much thicker. And these are all suckers on here. So these look like they're another plant, but really here is the main plant. So I'm going to Come in with my clippers and clean that up a little bit so that I can start to see what I'm really working with. 
and how much I really need to remove. Tomatoes actually are quite resilient, so I don't feel like I'm going to really hurt any of them, especially the ones that will be staying here in the ground. Um, and what's great is when you transplant tomatoes, you actually plant them quite a bit deeper than you dug them up. I'll show you about that um, later when I do the transplanting because they will grow deeper roots if you do it like that. So here I've got one healthy tomato plant that's already like three foot tall. It's just been neglected. So I'm gonna lean that one over and try to find my next healthy one, my next bigger, healthier one. And kind of just work like that and take the suckers off and thin them out and lean them up and then um, just get ready to start trellising them. All right, I had to take a little break there because it got too dark for filming. I kept working, but wasn't good quality video. So here you can see, I've got my tomato plants that I've thinned out. Mostly I've kept everything in the ground. I've just trimmed the suckers off my main vines. So that makes an amazing difference of how I can actually get in here. I can see my plants. I can see where they start from. And then what I did, the end of my string, I actually just tie around closer to the base of the plant, not tightly. This one has over an inch of room where I can put three fingers in there so that it's not too tight, but it is supported by being tied on. And then as we go up the vine, you can see I've kind of wrapped the vine around the twine, okay? And I'm going to keep wrapping it as I go. But now that I've got it maintained, as I move up the vine, I can see here. So see here, this is the main stem here. Here's a leaf. And where the, the leaf stem comes and joins the stem, that's called the crotch. And right here in the crotch, there's another plant growing. That's what's called a sucker. And what I'm doing is just pinching them off. Some people choose to keep them. You may choose to keep one or two. It will just depend on how you're growing them and what your goals are. Here's another one. Just pinch it off. When you get them and they're small enough, they're easy to just pinch off. If I come down here, I can see they're... And I think they just keep popping up because sometimes I cut them off or pinch them off and then they pop up again. So... It's as simple as that to keep it maintained. And as this vine continues to grow, I will continue to wrap it around my twine. And then what I will do is I will end up slacking out the twine and actually lowering the vine and keep trimming this up um, so that it will keep growing because tomatoes can grow very tall if you give them the opportunity. But as you can see, I've got tomatoes on here already. Now looking in here, you can see I've got this stem here. But then I've got, well, that one's a weed, that can go. But here, and here, and here, and here, there are all other tomato plants. And they're kind of sourced from right here behind this one. So that is a bit crowded. So I'm going to take some of these out, if not all of them, and find a new home for them. So here are some of the tomatoes that I will be trying to transplant. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to go right next to the stem because then I have a risk of breaking roots. I'm going to come outside several inches and go deep and try to loosen the soil. See how that's feeling. It's okay. Pull some of that back. Maybe loosen some of this around here. Okay, now you can see these are tomato roots. So try to lift. Try to lift it up from the bottom without pulling it out. Okay. Say that's pretty successful. I didn't damage any main roots. Dig a nice deep hole, okay? So on these tomato plants, it's only got 
a couple inches of space where I need to actually fill it. But what I'm going to do is when I plant them, I'm going to plant it several inches up. I'll probably plant it this deep. So then just this part is sticking out of the ground. Okay. The reason for that is so that the tomato plant will get deeper, stronger roots. Because then all along here, as far as whatever part I have underground, it will root. It's quite amazing how these tomatoes do. They're just really hardy, prolific, and um, they like to keep rooting. It's actually really healthy for them to plant them like that. So to get this apart, I'm going to try to break this up a little bit, shaking off some of the extra dirt, wiggling them. Here we go. That one's cut loose. So see that? That's all the roots for that this big plant has just those little roots. So I dug this nice deep hole, good eight inches deep or so. I'm going to put those roots all the way at the bottom and then bury the stem. And so then as I said, it's going to have roots all the way down. I'm going to do that with these other ones and a couple more that I'm going to transplant from that other area. So this is what it looks like now, and I'll give you a look when they're all done. As I'm going through and taking out these plants that I'm going to transplant, I'm also trimming the leaves up. So anything that's within six inches of the ground they are going to be trimmed off. This is just going to keep, oh, it's going to reduce the risk of pests and bugs and um, like funguses growing around the stem from too much moisture. So it's going to give it good airflow, good circulation, and it'll look a lot cleaner and I can really see with what I'm working with. So I've done it already to these first front tomato plants and uh, we'll check back in when I'm done with the back row. Okay, here's the finished product. I have removed all the suckers off the tomato plants. I have removed the ones that I'm going to transplant into another location, and I've removed the lower leaves on the vines that I'm keeping in here. So since I've removed everything and cleaned it up, I do see that I have some space to put some of the transplants in here. So that will be my next step. Okay, there we have it. I've re planted some of the transplants that I had originally removed. They were in pretty tight clusters and now they're here evenly spaced four to six inches apart. And what's nice is I'll have a continuing crop of tomatoes. Well actually here in Southern California you'll pretty much keep having tomatoes until the freezing temperatures come. But I've got some that are longer and already have tomatoes and then some even a small as my index finger. So it'll give me a nice continuous production um, until probably December or so. So um, I still have some other ones that I need to transplant. So I'm putting them in somewhere else in the garden because I'm actually kind of out of space here. And here's where I have transplanted my extras that don't fit in my tomato patch. So here is how the hooks work. Um, I tie the one loose end of the string down to the bottom of the tomato plant. I throw the hook up over my pole at the top and then I just wrap the cord around it to secure it on both ends. And that's it. As the tomato plant grows, I'll loosen the cords and let out some more slack. So that they can keep climbing because that's what they like to do and I know this seems like quite a dense planting of tomatoes and um, depending on what you're trying to accomplish it could be dense but since I'm going to be keeping my tomatoes long and lean um, and thinning them out and taking out all the suckers uh, this won't be a problem at all it'll be one strong plant 
putting more of its energy into actual tomatoes than the suckers. So theoretically, I'll get a higher quality tomato from it. So we'll wait and see. Thanks for joining me today, trying to tame my unruly tomatoes. We're definitely off to a pretty good start. And um, with this warm weather, they're going to just keep growing and doing good and making tomatoes for me. I can't wait to share my first tomato with you. Well, first tomato of the season <laughs> with you. Thanks for joining. Again, this is Tiff, the informal farmer. If you like this content and want to see more like it, specifically gardening in Southern California, Zone 9, um, having a quite successful garden for the first time in my life, what did I do to get here? Uh, be sure to like and subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on an episode. Thanks for joining. You got this.